In this edition of Tech Report, we've got a whole lot of tech going on. From those pesky terms and conditions we all just happily sign up for, to tips on how to land your dream job using LinkedIn. Then we've got games apps and our weekly top five. I'm Doni Kanile and this is Tech Report. So you know whenever you sign up for something new online, you're presented with that catch-all box tick saying, I accept the terms of use. Well, how often do you really know what you're agreeing to? A new project called TOSDR wants to change that. The site aims to give more power to the internet users by summarizing terms of service, flagging potential issues and rating apps on a scale from A, the best, to E, the worst. Seth has the story. It's long been said that I agree to the terms of service is the biggest lie on the internet. And even if you do read them, many terms of service are so ridden with legalese that you practically need to be a lawyer to understand them. In fact, a new report notes that if you actually bothered to read all the privacy policies you encounter on a daily basis, it would take you 250 working hours per year or about 30 work days. It's basically impossible. So no one reads them, and most people incorrectly assume that if a site has any privacy policy, they must keep data private, right? Wrong. The reality is that the incentives of a privacy policy are to not use it to keep your info private. In fact, the incentives are to make a privacy policy as permissive as possible, because the only time you get into trouble is not if you fail to protect someone's privacy, but if you violate your own privacy policy. So companies have the incentive to write a privacy policy that is as permissive to the company as possible so that they're less likely to avoid violating their own privacy policy. That is, conceptually, the best privacy policy for a company is one that says we don't take your privacy seriously at all and share all your data because then they'll never break the policy. But a new project called TOSDR, Terms of Service Didn't Read, wants to change that. The site aims to give more power to users by summarizing terms of service, flagging potential issues, and rating apps on a scale from A, which is the best, to E. So far, the only company with an E is the worst possible rating, is TwitPic, which reserves the rights to sell users' photos to news agencies without giving the photographer a cut. How does the service work? I'm so glad you asked. While the service will only officially launch after the Campus Party 2012 conference, developer Roy Hugo says he envisages a service that will allow users to search for company names on their database and the salient points of that company's terms of service will be presented, along with the rating from A to E and any red flags. TOSDR will be relying on open source contributions from legal experts across the world to summarize terms of service one by one and supply the information to them. Looks like they flippin' nailed it. But there are a few good eggs out there. SoundCloud, OpenStreetMap and Wikipedia, for example, provide summaries of their terms of service that make it easier for users to understand what they're getting into. Very nice of them. The beauty of this new project is that it can work for almost any terms of service agreement for any company. The open source contribution model of the project means that it's literally only a matter of resources and time before the world's most confusing legalese is unraveled before our eyes. I can definitely get behind something like that. After all, knowledge is power. Here's to freedom, kids. Everyone loves a bargain, right? But the rub is that it's sometimes so much work to find one. Well, now you might not have to. Julia takes a look. Welcome to the world of comparison shopping. That's right, compare prices and buy the product that best suits your wallet, all by pressing a couple of buttons on your mobile phone. And great news for us, it's now also available in South Africa. To get some background info, let's take a look at some international examples. 
First off, there is the Shop Savvy app, which was originally launched in the US and one of the first apps to let its customers scan barcodes and compare prices. It is available on iOS, Android and Windows operated phones and with it you can search for products online, see prices at other brick and mortar and online retailers and even load up your Shop Savvy wallet with cash so you can quickly purchase directly through the app. According to VentureBeat.com, the app currently has over 10 million users. Then there is also the Brazilian comparison app called Buscap. It does much the same as the Shop Savvy app, but by using the app you'll be able to view various products from the stores of five Latin American countries. You have to add items to a clipboard and the application then researches and shows the lowest price for each item at the smallest possible number of stores. If all of the products on the list are available at a single store, that will be considered the best purchase. Recently, a South African company has also taken advantage of this technology and launched the free price check app for Apple, Samsung, Blackberry and Nokia smartphone users. Let's give it a whirl! The layout of the app is simple and user-friendly. You can search through a database of 30 million products from 400 online shops, from groceries to electronics and even flights. I decided to try it out with a telescope. First, you open up the app, you press the barcode button, you scan the product and you get an instant online price check. You can save it in favorites, check reviews and share your bargain with friends on Facebook and Twitter. It's definitely a great app for consumers on a bargain hunt and retailers should probably sit up and take note too. This kind of thing can either drive more customers your way as they discover your super low prices or drive them off in a huff when they discover you don't offer the kind of value for money you promise. After the break, we get networking with LinkedIn and we check out what Google Plus is doing to try and get relevant.